Good day. I am so excited. I am so thrilled to be part of this Made in Africa conference and uh, to be part of the drive for African nations and African businesses to engage with one another in the marketplace and to buy Africa. What a timely message this is. And um, especially when we're looking at hot topics such as the AFC FTA, and um, there's a lot of um, excitement and bubbling over for small businesses finally to have a fighting chance at doing international business. Uh, before I go any further, let me introduce myself. My name is Tiamo Defni Tapa. I am the managing director of a company called Collective Value Creation Botswana. Collective Value Creation was established seven years ago in South Africa. So we have branches in South Africa and we also have a branch here in Botswana. And um, I am also a member of uh, SIP. Uh, we are also affiliated to SIP, sorry, and SIP stands for the Center for International Private Enterprise, which was established in um, 1983 as part of a nonprofit under the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Uh, among other things, SIP has a growing network of um, anti-corruption trainers and consultants across Africa and other continents. I am also a member of the African uh, Anti-Corruption Network of Trainers, and this is a this is a position that I'm uh, a membership that I'm very very proud of, and I'm I'm excited I'm thrilled about. Um, uh, being able to operate in this space, especially as a trainer and a consultant. Today, I'm going to be uh, on the stream, and I welcome you all for coming on the stream. Um, I'm going to be speaking about empowering SMEs and especially looking at uh, how SMEs can be empowered to meet global anti-corruption procurement practices and build sustainable businesses. It goes without saying that in uh, this um, era that um, corruption hinders the growth of many, many small businesses and companies in the African continent. And businesses have suffered uh, numerous income losses, revenue losses. Um, companies have gone through, um, you know, have, have been have gone through embezzlement uh, scandals, fraud, innovation and competition is stifled in, in, in countries where especially corruption is rife. You know, there's no, innovation is not given a chance and so is uh, competition. Also, there's a loss of jobs in some um, countries altogether where multinationals uh, decide uh, that they're not gonna operate in that space because corruption has become just too an expensive exercise for them to engage uh, or have uh, any profitable uh, run any profitable business there so that is why i'm excited to be an ambassador and to be able to speak about anti-corruption and also to be able to put forward the business case for anti-corruption because one exists and um, when we're speaking about uh, procurement and we're also talking about supply chain management, we know that these are functions or units that are, all, uh, that are almost always the most vulnerable to corruption risks. And um, whether it's in the public or the private sector, we do know that uh, the procurement departments are always uh, the most uh, seemingly vulnerable. You know, you, you will have those on um, many ethical and compliance risks, such as requesting for gifts or requesting for bribes, uh, facilitation payments, inflated pricing, dishonest staff or dishonest public officials. So that being said, I believe that the procurement space and the supply chain space have a tremendous and a pivotal, pivotal role to play in ensuring that um, small businesses can stand a chance in the marketplaces they operate in and they, and they can bring 
uh, to the bare minimum acts of corruption in those uh, local markets and global markets. So beginning with anti-corruption um, practices within the major corporations is so vital. It is so critical, even in the small businesses, including the procurement departments um, playing an active role in um, anti-corruption compliance. Um, this can all play a direct and an indirect uh, role to empower SMEs in the local markets to operate and to grow and become sustainable businesses. So the supply chain and the procurement uh, profession can play a leadership role, an important role, in ensuring that corruption is minimized within a marketplace. So within organizations, there is a great need for strong, committed, and ethical leadership. I believe that this goes without saying that leadership has to set the tone at the top. The tone at the top for running businesses of integrity, businesses that reflect ethical behavior. For instance, the CEO and the board of director have a legal duty at all times because they are the corporate fiduciaries to ensure that um, the organization does not come under any uh, foreseeable harm to things such as corruption, including fraud, embezzlement, and the like. So by setting the tone at the top, the management, for instance, can um, make sure that their message is very clear, that their message is very consistent, and then also their message is visible, and then they actively support and commit the company. They commit, they show their commitment to the company's um, compliance programs. So there are several ways that leadership can set that tone at the top. And by, by a, a, an organization or a company being able to do this and starting with the leadership, it will give it a good example and it will set a great example for small businesses to try and aspire to emulate. And um, as I mentioned, there are several ways that uh, leadership can set this tone from the top. And they can issue statements to company employees. They can issue statements to business partners. And these business partners include their vendors, include their, their small business suppliers. And these statements can be issued by the CEO or the board of directors on a regular basis regarding company values of business integrity. So getting the message out there about where the business and the organization stands when it comes to corruption, that under no circumstances will they engage or are employees allowed to engage in unethical behavior. Businesses can require, bigger businesses or larger corporations can require compliance with the business ethics and compliance program from all directors and managers. Once it becomes very clear that no one is, is above the law in terms of the compliance program, that directors and managers uh, will be held accountable when it comes to the compliance program and when it comes to the penalties that have been, have been put in place, uh, perhaps in the code of conduct, then it will become very clear to the rest of the employees, even those in the procurement or supply chain departments, that uh, management and leadership are quite serious about combating and preventing corruption in that particular um, organization. Leadership can ensure that there is a provision for compliance standards, such as manuals, such as videos, such as training sessions, and regularly evaluate performance of these standards. So this shows that there is, there is the, and it's evidence that there is a commitment to ensuring that um, everyone is informed about um, the anti-corruption compliance program that obviously will be in place when leadership is showing that they are committed to combating corruption in their space. 
The most important thing is to make sure that there is a clear and consistent message on business ethics and integrity efforts that is going out to the organization, to the community at large. And that's also, that also going to um, SMEs or vendors or suppliers that might be working with this organization or several organizations. Small businesses can be encouraged and um, ultimately empowered to um, have an active anti-corruption compliance program, firstly, and also to have an active compliance function in their business. And having a, a business integrity program benefits um, the small business more than not having one in place. And I will share with I will share some of the positives for smaller businesses having a business um, integrity program or an anti-corruption compliance program in place. And one of the most um, exciting ones is that multinationals often require partners to have compliance protocols in place. So when we're now talking about um, the, uh, we're talking about things like the AFCFTA, we realize that uh, more often than not, we will, there is a great deal of a chance where multinational companies will want to seek out local partners in Africa to be able to work with them, to supply, to work with them and through them um, in order to take advantage of the free trade area. So it has become commonplace for MNCs or multinational companies to expect local partners to have a business integrity program in place before they will move forward with any partnership. So small businesses or SMEs or SMMEs having a business integrity program in place give themselves an advantage over other uh, local vendors because by having this compliance program in place, they can be easily selected, they can be easily picked uh, for by an investor who's looking for a local partner that has clear evidence that they run a business following anti-corruption compliance programs. So why would this be important for multinational companies? This is important because these companies are heavily policed by international and national laws, such as the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act of the United States or UKBA, which is a UK Bribery Act. All these are highly enforced uh, uh, laws that affect companies that have any kind of dealing with um, countries such as the USA or the UK. And large corporations such as um, Halliburton, Rolls-Royce have suffered huge fines that run in the billions when after investigation, they were found to have um, third parties that had engaged in bribery, in briberies to get jobs. And this cost them a huge, huge losses, share losses, reputational losses, you name it. So multinational companies are looking especially to work with local partners that can prove that they have a business integrity program in place and that they are committed to being ethical throughout. Business uh, integrity plans or initiatives within a small business can lead to increased business growth and borrowing opportunities. Many lenders, including venture capital firms, are looking uh, for companies that can prove and evidence that they have these um, anti-corruption compliance programs in place because they themselves are required to mitigate their own regulatory and integrity risks. So you find that um, 
there is a business case for anti-corruption compliance, especially for small businesses to put in place. Due to time, I will just quickly skip to one of the most exciting positives that um, uh, can that uh, information that can help SMEs not feel like you know corruption is such an overwhelming um, or, or, or a, lo a losing battle or a rhetoric without action is is that many uh, several countries that were once labeled as high corruption uh, countries such as Ukraine and Thailand have slowly and surely began to turn the tide around against corruption. And they have done this through what is known as collective action. So a, a, a small business on their own can obviously not manage to defeat the, eco, the, the, the unethical ecosystem of corruption in any nation. But what collective action does is that it, it creates an equal and a fair market conditions and ultimately reduces corruption risks across the marketplace in a nation or and eventually in a continent such as such as ours and collective actions can are uh, can be started through business associations or chambers of commerce and what you're basically doing when you come together as a small businesses and entrepreneurs, you are bringing together companies that are interested in integrity and compliance initiatives. You are linking arms to form certifying business uh, co coalitions. So one, one of the, there are several, um, several, several points that can be put in place to assist uh, members to maintain their business integrity and to maintain their compliance. And um, a, a, a certifying business coalition can require their members to publicly commit to adhere to integrity standards, for instance. They can require compliance with shared principles for continued membership. They can recognize and recommend certified companies to customers, to the government, and to investors. And we have great examples, as I mentioned earlier, for this. We have the Ukraine Network of Integrity and Compliance. There is a collective action coalition against uh, corruption in Thailand. So we can see that um, in countries where there, 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 there's a high level of corruption, small businesses have managed to come together to begin to say, hang on, this is not the marketplace in which we want to operate, but we choose now to come together and change the narrative about our, our, our country and how we do business in our nation. Unfortunately, due to time, uh, this is where I have to stop so that I can take some questions from, from you guys that are listening. And I just thank you so much for taking time out to come into the stream and listen to what I have to say. I will now be taking questions and uh, I look forward to having a chat with you all. Thank you so much.